thank you, Lord, for your grace abounding. Lord, uh, Lord, it's your mercy and your grace. It's not a man who wills, a man who runs, but it's by your mercy. So we just ask you right now, Lord, just fill me. Lord, that you would speak forth your truth, that it would give life. Lord, that there would be no mixture. Lord, that it would uh, just be seeds sown in unto our hearts, Lord, that would produce 160 and 30 fold, Lord. And that we would just see Christ through all this, Lord. That he would be glorified, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We thank you for the powerful work of the cross and the blood of Jesus. Without that, this nothing, we wouldn't be here, Lord. It is by your mercy and grace. So we thank you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So real quickly, if it's your first time, this is the workshops that we do on Monday nights. And <clears throat> it is to, it's a discipleship duplication. It's a ministry. It's a stewardship that the Lord's uh, graced me with to be a to steward. When the Lord gives you something, you're a steward of it. That's right. So be faithful to it. Because the Lord can take it away. Okay? We can't squander. We can't. We have to be really faithful, and it's only the Lord. I mean, He, you know, the Lord wants to use us, but if we're not obeying Him and responding to what He's calling us, He'll put you on the shelf. You think the Lord would do that? You think the Lord is willing to bypass you for years and years and years and years? Finally, you just say, "Forget it." Okay, I'm just asking. Okay, He will. Well, you never hear Barnabas anymore. You know, Paul and Barnabas were sent out. Is that true? But then there was this disagreement with Paul because of his nephew, right? John Mark. And so Paul ended up saying, okay, go ahead, you and John Mark. So you never hear Barnabas again. Of course the Lord gives. He's long-suffering. He gives much grace. So yes, I agree, brother. There's long-suffering. He'll go to the other ends, okay? Um, <clears throat> But what happened is um, Barnabas, you don't hear about him anymore, but you do hear about his, his nephew because Paul eventually goes, call John Mark, because now he's ready. He wasn't ready then. That's why there was that disagreement. And so he was useful. Isn't that amazing? Hallelujah. God, the Lord's very practical, is he not? He's very practical. So the ministry of discipleship duplication is a ministry that equips God's remnant, God's warriors for battle in the invisible realm. Amen? <laughs> this is all new to you, sister? <laughs> in another living, living color, right? <laughs> you can hear it, it's just an awesome testimony. There, we've had a lot of testimonies this whole week, but it just, we just can't share all of them throughout weeks and months. And, but today I just decided to have a testimony. And so the whole goal is to really, to equip ones, train ones, God's people for ministry, right? For the work of service, for the building up of the body of Christ. That he would have his kingdom on earth, and his kingdom on earth actually is in the practical sense, it's his ecclesia, his church, his lampstands that he has built. And you'll know because his authority is there. Amen? So this is what the ministry does. And I'm gonna do my best to make, I'm trying to make it shorter, the videos, so that it could like maybe 30, 40 minutes so that people could listen to it instead of long videos, it's hard to just listen to. But when it's shorter, at least you could do it through podcasts. Amen? And the one thing else I wanted to share, <clears throat> my book just been published. I don't know who has the book, but it's just been recently published. You can get it at Amazon, and and I'm gonna I'm looking to put it on Audible, but I was first thinking maybe I'll just put it, do a podcast and break it up in chapters so that everyone can access it anytime, because not everyone has Audible, and, and Audible gets a little challenging. Amen. So, so today I want to share. I shared some, a little bit about it yesterday, but the Lord's really put it on my heart because we're looking to do a conference. <clears throat> and that conference 
I don't want to share the name because it's going to be on YouTube and people might take it. But it has to do with, it's on November 11th through the 13th. We're praying about it. We're still looking for a facility and just, the Lord's going to do it. I don't know if it's going to be limited seating. Is it for, you know, just ones that are really hungry. <clears throat> and it's really going to talk about the new wine and new wine skin. And that is, he wants to recover the church. I threw out, went throughout the history already of what was lost in the past. And I believe we're living the day that he wants to restore the church. And it's totally, totally organic. It's a living organism. Because many people are, are really tired of just doing the same thing over and over again. Whether they want to admit it or not, um, it's just they, they're, they're sensing there's got to be something new. There's got to be something different. Instead of just going through the hamster wheel, doing the same thing over and over again, and expecting a different result. Surely God, the Lord uses, He'll use whatever it takes, right? He'll, if it has to use a donkey to speak, He will. And He has done that in the Word of God, right? So <clears throat> I, I believe that this is the time for this, this conference. I had meetings with some leaders in, in this whole region, Christian leaders, very powerful and influential uh, leaders, and, and this is the time. Amen? So, <clears throat> So I want to talk about today, I want to uh, first start off by opening the Word of God. Let's go to Ephesians 4, I'm going to go through Ephesians 4, and I'm going to go through Corinthians, I want to talk about gifts, I'm going to talk about the Lord's proper headship in the ecclesia, in the body of Christ, locally and universally. So Ephesians 4, verse 11, amen. And then we'll have, we're going to have a... A testimony and when did you guys get back sister now I go. oh really because yeah. I was thinking oh maybe I have you share maybe another time amen so praise God the Lord is that amazing work in your lives okay so Ephesians chapter 4 let me read that okay in verse 11 it says this it says and he gave some as apostles and some as prophets and some as evangelists some as pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the saints for the work of service to the building up of the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a mature man, to the, mature, to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. As a result, we are no longer to be children tossed here and there by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by but by the or by the trickery of men, by craftiness in deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in all aspects into him who is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body being fitted and held together by what every joint supplies, according to the proper working, for each individual part causes the growth. For the building up for the body of itself in love. And I know we talk about growth, and when we really start talking about growth, most people think it's all about numbers. It's the farthest from what the Lord's speaking about. He had only 12 disciples. 12 disciples affected the whole world. Is that right? It started multiplying. And, and this word growth, when you start studying and look at the Greek, it's speaking of maturity. Isn't that interesting? It's speaking of life. Growth here is speaking of the growth in life. How much of life is growing in you? That is very foreign to what we normally perceive the word growth is. Is that true or not? Is it true or not? Okay, because to grow in life, we have to allow Christ to grow in us. You can have many, you can have thousands and thousands of people, right? But very little growth in life. No maturity. That is not a testimony to Jesus. Amen? That's why the Corinthians, Paul could not speak of deep things of the Lord. Not ready. They were just drinking milk. They were still babies. And the Lord Jesus ain't going to marry a baby. 
going to marry a mature bride. Amen? Not someone in diapers, but a mature bride that is growing. Do you want your child to stay in diapers or just kind of bumbling? You know, one years old, now two, three, four, five, ten years old, still needing, just still like a child. Or do you want your child to mature and grow? Well, see, the Lord's practical. If we're children of God, well, if we expect that of our own children, well, why don't we allow Christ to have that same perspective that we should grow as well? We thought about that. It's a different thing, right? Because we are very unique. You know, the Lord can't have His way, but we'll have our way. <laughs> Is that true or not? So let's speak of the truth. This room can affect thousands. It can affect the world. You know, you have a small gathering. We have our workshops on <clears throat> Sundays. But most people don't realize how many people are being affected around the world. From ministries that we teach at, that are teaching what we're teaching, that, that sends people out all over the world. Missionary churches that are speaking to thousands. From pastors that are sharing, drawing these circles, that have churches that have a, ten, a group of uh, every, every Sunday, 4,000 people. And they're drawing these circles. Do you see the impact it's having now? Do you understand the process of duplication? And that's why I was speaking about the... I was speaking about... What was the word I used? The in light of business. I use the word, no, not that. Disruptive. Disruptive. Disruptive business models. You know why retailers are going out of business? Because you have businesses that are disruptive called Amazon. You know, people don't go shopping. You know why all these stores, all, everything is being disrupted. Because Amazon or you can look at Uber, you know, Uber, not Uber, yeah, Uber. They have all these taxi drivers. It's the largest taxi company in the world, but they don't own in, they don't, don't they don't own one taxi. They empower the drivers. You have the hospitality company called Airbnb. It's the largest in the world. It's the, it just blew away all the top. Every single hotel hospitality suite in the world, it just blows them away. Yet they own no real estate. I mean, see, we, 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 our mindset is on the, the staying on the traditions, right? Yet, yet the church is supposed to be disruptive. <laughs> the Lord wants to give the power of the Holy Spirit to each member of the body. Amen? Amen? So that they be used, every member. Empower them with the Holy Spirit, not empower one or two people. Hallelujah. See, this is not the church, me coming up here. This is a ministry for the building up of the church. So it doesn't matter where you go. Because I, you know, we teach at, here we teach at this church and all the other churches around and different academies and stuff. There are different gatherings and churches, but I'm just building up the body. Amen? Amen. See, that's the real model. Hallelujah. So... <clears throat> I was reading in Ephesians, but let's also turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And I'm going to show how, how this is biblical. It's very simple. It's very biblical. But we've been taught something erroneous. Not purposefully or not intentionally. Okay? This is just what we've been taught. Alright? And so, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12... Let me just read the, I'm just going to read, um, <clears throat> let me see, all the way up to, yeah, let's read, let's read, um, just let me read from, from four, let me read from verse one, okay, and I'll just stop as the Lord leads. Uh, chapter 12, verse Corinthians 12, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware. You know that when you were pagans, you were led astray to the mute idols, however you were led. 
Therefore I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God says Jesus is a curse. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are varieties of ministries in the same Lord. There are varieties of effects, but the same God who works all things in all persons. Now effects is the result of manifestations of the power of the Holy Spirit moving, okay? But to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. So varieties and effects are different than manifestations. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith but by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, and to another the effecting of miracles, and to another prophecy, and to another the distinguishing of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues. But the one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually, just as He wills. So the Lord distributes according to His will, not because you want it. It says pray, that you pray for the greater gifts. Is that right? But we're always praying for the most smallest gift. And what is that? Speaking in tongues, but it's the smallest gift. Have you ever thought about that? But we've made it the greatest gifts. Now, I'm speaking the word of God here. And you know, when I'm, I know there's a lot of warfare because I have people and different leaders, but they're afraid to tell to me straight, you know, because I know they know I'm speaking the truth. Okay, there's a lot of pushback. But when you, the people have to speak kind of under the incognito, after the incognito means kind of under the, under the radar when they share with the leaders because they don't want what? People to know they think very similar. Because there's a big, huge reputation that's on the line. Let's just really be really clear. Unfortunately, or fortunately, the landscape of the modern church today, listen, don't listen to me. It is over. It's just how long do you want to stay in that? Or how long do you want to really start seeking the truth and having your groups and letting the Lord empower you? Read the Pew Research. Read George Barna Research. Just read it. You can't revamp it. Because it's not the people. The system is the wrong system. It's the traditional system. The Lord wants his disruptive business model. The disruptive church. I mean, you all know Francis Chan, right? Well, why did he leave his mega church? Read, read the letters to the elders, the re letters to the church. What's the name of the book? I read it, but I don't. Letters to the church. Well, read it. Read it. Letters to the church. If you read his book, he's going to say it and lay it out. Don't listen to me. Then he tried to do what we were doing. Okay? And in San Francisco. And But the challenge was. He was bringing big church concepts into small homes, but that don't work either, okay? It takes time, it takes the power of the Holy Spirit. You cannot use your way of thinking and bring it and try to build a church because he says, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail, amen? <clears throat> that means death to the self. Your concepts, your ideas, are you willing, are you willing to put it to the cross? I mean, Paul was a genius, the Apostle Paul. Was he not? And he was so far off that what? what he tried to he persecuted the Christians until he had to have revelation. Are you willing to have revelation? Are you willing to have revelation? Or do you want to stay where you're at? It's okay if you want to stay where you're at. Nobody's going to force you, and surely Christ will not force you because he's a gentle. Or do you want to be used in a mighty way? The true gifting is that God's called you to. Amen? Amen? It's a new wine. New wine skin. But it really isn't new, but it's, he's recovering that because for centuries, 1,500 years, it was locked up. 1,300 years. Okay? Through Rome, Roman Catholicism, Orthodox, they locked it up. Amen? But now the Lord is moving. Hallelujah. Okay, so let's... Um, so today I want to talk about a couple things. I want to... Share and I, I probably will be doing a series because I want to keep it, you know, short. I'm, 
this is so much, so I might be breaking it up. And, <clears throat> and maybe this might be a series. But I wanted to, by just by, by just an outline, I want to talk about the different things about the gift things, okay? That is, categories of the gifts to the body and to the individuals and what's the purpose of it. The source of the gifts, gifts of God, and the purpose of the gifts, the result of gifts. You know, because maybe we might be a little confused with all of them because the enemy comes as an angel of light and he surely wants to give you counterfeit gifts. Is that, do you believe that? Okay, but maybe if we don't really know, I'm saying this from personal experience because I run into, we have testimonies of people speaking in a demonic tongue and they never even knew that. <laughs> That's true. And it hears like a normal, it hears like a normal tongue. And I prayed and next thing you know, it just, and they will tell you that was not of the Lord, that tongue. But it surely seems like it was of the Lord. So you got to be careful. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> so let's uh, go back to Ephesians 4. Okay? Ephesians 4. And in Ephesians 4, <clears throat> and I know, I really know the enemy doesn't want me to speak about this thing, but, but the Lord Jesus wants me to. So I really don't care. You know what I mean? I just care what Jesus wants. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And that's where he gives grace. When you're willing to speak the truth. Even if it's a lonely road. Speak the truth. You know, this is not, again, I've said, not a popularity contest. You know, I, <clears throat> you honor the Lord, the Lord will honor you and will give you works of power. he will give you spiritual authority. Spiritual wisdom. Spiritual insight. Spiritual knowledge. Spiritual power. Just honor the Lord. And allow him to gain in your life. Amen? And ultimately, it will be a testimony to Jesus. So let's look at this verse in Ephesians 4, just for two verses. And he gave some as apostles and some as prophets, and some as evangelists and some as prophets and teachers, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of service, for the building up of the body of Christ. Well, I want to just talk about those two verses, because these two verses in many circles have been misinterpreted. And because of that, that's why we have very difficulty of finding out, finding or having some kind of discipleship plans. In churches, the biggest, one of their biggest challenges is, to, is having a discipleship class, a real, true, genuine discipleship class. Okay? And, and I believe it's because of one of us, because this word. This word. So why? Because true discipleship, you catch a, a fish for a day, you know, catch it during the week. You feed them for a day. Catch a fish to prepare to feed God's people for Sunday. But the problem is, if you teach them how to fish, they don't need to show up on Sunday anymore. Why is that? Why is that? Because they know how to fish. Yeah. Why do I need to show up? You're like, oh, that's pretty interesting. You don't like that, so maybe some people don't like that. Because you need to have that, you know, I need somebody to be under, I cannot go directly to the Lord. That's why he says, come to me, those who are weary and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. He's your answer in genuine believers, Christ dwells in you, okay? And, I, and, and it really, the, one of it is to be taught, what it means to be taught of him, because let no man teach it but the anointed. It's very practical, and I'm gonna maybe teach that in the next couple of days, next couple of weeks, but you catch a fish for a day, feed them for a day. But you teach them how to fish, feed them for a lifetime. What do you want to be? What do you want to learn? You just want someone to catch the fish and feed you for a day? No, no, really. Does that what you really want? You know? Do you want someone just to feed you every day and you just warm the pews while one person feeds you? Do you want that? Well, if you don't, I mean, you know, no one, well, inside, but what do we do then? 
Or do you want to learn? Wait, wait, you don't have to show up. You can start feeding yourself and feeding others and teaching them how to feed themselves. That's called discipleship. <laughs> you know, cooking a meal for others. Don't you want to cook meals for others? I mean, it's, an enjoy it's joyful when you cook meals for others and just feed them and just... Because the Lord wants to feed. He feeds us and he gives the loaves and the fishes. The disciples have said, have them recline in John 6. Have them sit down where the grass is. And you feed them. You feed them. He wants you, you to feed them. But if you're just busy having someone catch the fish and feed you on Sundays, how can you ever feed them? You're just going to regurgitate or repeat what they say. But you've never fished yourself. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. You know it's true what I'm saying, but you, well, how do you do it? How does this work? Well, just keep showing up. <laughs> you know, and you're going to start feeding fish because you're not, you know why? Because you're going to know how to cook in the kitchen of heaven. You're going to be all chefs. You're going to be all executive chefs in the kitchen of heaven. So you can feed. That's the side. That is discipleship. True discipleship. You know, because he's the bread of life. You know, he's the water of life. He's a tree of life. He's all food. Amen? Amen? He's not just here to give you a bunch of menus or recipes, excuse me, which is just a bunch of letters. But he wants to give you food to give to others so you can eat. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So this verse, it says this. It's really important. So it says, some he gave as apostles, some as prophets, some evangelists, and some as pastors and teachers for a very specific purpose. For equipping. Okay. <clears throat> now, I just want to talk briefly about, you know, apostles and, and prophets, evangelists, shepherds, and teachers. So, apostles, what is an apostle? Okay, the word apostle or is a sent one. One who is sent out. That's an apostle. Okay. It's not self-appointed apostle. It's not people walking around saying, I'm an apostle. Okay, and you know, Paul did say, I'm an apostle. There are times, okay? And the apostles are for today. Because was Paul part of the 12? No? no. And there's other apostles too that function as apostles. Okay, you know apostles because they're always sent out. They're always out feeding, raising up churches, ecclesias. That's what they're doing. They're, they're, they're not there all the time in their local church. They were sent out. Paul and Barnabas were sent out from the church in what? Antioch. But it wasn't man doing it. It was first by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit led them, the elders, to lay hands and send out Paul and Barnabas. Barnabas was a part of the twelve. Was he? Yeah. See, they're apostles for today. But they're sent out. But how do you know a true apostle, too? Because they're sent out. There's all those all building, laying foundations, right? They're laying foundations. But in the Word of God, when you read about apostles, they're not, it's not a gift, okay? You know, someone say you have the gift of apostleship. There's no gift. The apostle, that's not a gift. It is a commissioning. Now, prophets is a gift because you need the gift of what? Prophecy. And it's in the Word of God. Apostles is not a gift. It's a Commissioning from the Lord. Okay? <laughs> Amen? Amen? But the apostles, they have gifts. They might have the gift of prophecy, the gift of teaching. You see what I'm saying? The gift of pastor. They, they have this gift. They have all these gifts, and they have power. But apostles is not a gift in the sense of when we think of the gift of healing, the gift of power. It is a gift to the body, but it's not, as we read, we'll read in 1 Corinthians, okay? It is, it is a calling, it's a commission. Amen? Amen? Now, why am I saying this? Because to, and today you have all these people that are prophets and apostles, or, and you know, they're speaking all these prophecies all over the world, especially during the election. Is that true? In the yeah. past. And every one of them failed. They're wrong. So what excuse do they have now? They need to get stoned. Well, they're, 
They might, if they have a gift of prophecy, they're probably, because the apostles give prophets too. I'm just sharing that. Let's be, let's have reality here. Right? Okay? Well, that's the prophets I'm talking about. All right? But apostles are sent out ones. <clears throat> now, prophets are local. They stay. They stay within their, the local church. Okay? These gifts were given to the local church. There's a universal church, and that is in Hebrews 12, they come up to Mount Zion, to, to the city of the living God, to the general assembly of the Lord. This is the universal body of Christ throughout the world. Amen? But here, it's the local church, just like you have the church in Revelation chapter 1 and 2, the seven churches, right? Ephesus, Smyrna, Philadelphia, Laodicea, you know, <clears throat> all these churches, right? And so, Sardis. So this is local. It's really for the body. So when apostles go out, they don't have authority over other churches that they lay the foundation. Because when they assign elders, like Paul did, they don't deal with the church affairs. They're the ones heading up the church now. In fact, if the elders at that local church that they actually raised up don't want Paul to come back anymore, that's their prerogative. They're not under Paul. Because if they're under Paul, all the churches he's raised up, what will you have? denomination. You hear what I just said? Paul had a ministry. What's that? Wow. You, does that make sense? You have a denomination. They're all under Paul, but that's not how autonomous. Churches are autonomous. Paul had a ministry to build up the church. It's underneath to build up the body of Christ. Okay? That's what we have today called ministerial churches. And I'm not going to go into that word. All right? <clears throat> Isn't that interesting? Study it. If they need help from, churches need help, they have questions, they go to maybe the apostles and they'll give them input and suggestions and they'll exercise their authority, but they have no, that's not their church. They even raise them up but they don't own that church. Christ raised it up. Christ is the head. Otherwise, guess what? You have a denomination. That's where the vision comes in. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm just sharing the truth. Is that okay? Okay, and it's very practical. Well, here, then you talk about prophets, uh, the gift of prophecy, and then let's just talk about evangelists because we had some questions on evangelists. The, the word evangelist is only in three places in the New Testament. You know, do the work of the evangelists. It's one of them, right? And also, it speaks about here, you also speak about in Acts. Hallelujah. Man, these things are so small, it's hard to read. Acts 21 8, okay, and in, in Timothy, and then in this verse right here. There's only three places to find evangelists. And it's not a gift. Because you don't find it as a gift in 1 Corinthians 12, do you? So when you tell people, oh, you got the gift of evangelism. It's not a gift. Is it making sense what I'm saying? Let's be clear. Let's be accurate. Let's be absolute, right? But, but, but what it is, when it speaks here, it is, there are those, that's why it says, do the work of the evangelist. That's why it's not a gift. Anyone can do the work. The word evangelist actually means gospelizing. That's a Greek. It's just to speak the good news. But here it's referring to there are some that actually it's their vocation. Okay? So yeah, they can do tent meetings and preach the gospel. Like Billy Graham or, or so, yeah? That is that, that was their vocation, right? So, so there's a difference, okay? But it's not a gift. Amen? Yeah, but so, and then, then you have the pastors and teachers that teach, etc. Okay, now I want to go through this right here real clearly um, on this. And so, I mean, the word is pretty clear what it sells. Okay, here is, it's really important. I want to talk, I spoke this yesterday, but I want to show it so it makes it clear. This verse in the literal translation, literal, 
Okay? Young's literal translation says this. And that is the verse, verse 11 or 12. First, let me just read it. And he gave some as apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And verse 12 in the literal translation says this. Unto the perfecting of the saints for a work of ministration or a work of ministry or for service for a building up of the body of the Christ. That's how it's written. Okay? So basically what's saying in simple terms, he says all these verses here, and then he says, to the building up of the body of Christ, excuse me, it says, it says, evangelists and pastors and teachers for or toward the perfecting, which means what? Equipping. The word perfecting means equipping. Of the saints. So these Five gifts that we call the five bold ministry of the five gifts is actually to equip, like if this was an ecclesia and assembly of church, and if I was a, a prophet or apostle, evangelist, pastor, teacher, I would be equipping you. You, you understand? For what? For ministry. This is really important. I would be equipping you not to stay on your seats every Sunday. I would be equipping you for ministry because everyone here has a gift, at least one. I would be equipping you to find what your gifting is for ministry, for service. Amen? Amen. You don't need a college degree. You don't need a theology degree. Are you? Hey, listen, I'm, 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 I just started uh, at the uh, Hebrew University of Jerusalem, okay, in Israel. It's like, it's the number one Hebrew university or university in Israel. And I'm taking Greek. I mean, Hebrew first, then Aramaic, then Greek. And it's like, it's going to be like six, seven years. This is not easy. <laughs> but the Lord told me to. Not for the degree, but I'm going to get a degree. Okay, and I'm just sharing this because, hey, you want it to? Come and join. It's not easy. You know what I mean? It's very difficult. Very, very difficult. All right? And so... But the Lord called me because it changes, it puts the word in, into color. Amen. And I want to desire, I desire to know the translation, the meaning directly. How to read it. Okay? How to understand it. Not for me, it's for the whole body. Amen? Amen. And you know, seriously, and afterwards I could teach, I'll, they said they'll, you're, you'll be a scholar, whatever. But I'm not doing it for the degree. I'm doing it because the Lord put it on my heart. Why? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm in my 60s, man. Going back to school, seriously? You know? But, <laughs> I mean, I'm like, oh, man. Anyway, so here's my point. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. This is so key. These five gifts are to build you up for ministry. It's equip. It's actually to equip you for ministry. Perfect and equip you for ministry. That's right, each and every one of you, you know, that has Christ, you have a gift and you have a ministry. Not just a couple people, every one of you. <clears throat> and then, for what purpose? Okay? For the building up of the body of Christ. So I'm gonna keep it real simple. These five gifts to the body, to the church, is there to equip each and every one of you for ministry, for service, so that you can build a church. That's what it says, so that you can build the church. So the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, shepherds, and teachers are not directly building up the church. They're building each member in the body for ministry so that you can function in building the church that you go to. Does that make sense? Does that make sense what I just said? And I'm going to make it real practically when I relate it to Corinthians. It's just, now, if it didn't say that, because most people, the, the church fathers, they said it, it all means the same thing. But it doesn't mean the same thing. All right? It does, I'm, I'm sharing, sorry I have to get technical, 
But I want you to know this is the truth. It's not something I'm making up, okay? Um, the church fathers, they discounted, not all of them, discounted the actual Greek. Why? Because, see, this passage has actually three clauses. One, two, three. But there's three, two commas, there's three clauses. And if it were the same, then I could invert, switch around, perfecting, and the work of ministry, right? If it's the same, I could switch those sentences, switch those clauses around. Is that true? Invert them. Make sense? Okay. So that's what I did there. I inverted it. And so the verse is, pastors and teachers unto the work or service for ministry with a view to protect, perfect or equip the saints. Does that make sense? That means the pastors and shepherds and evangelists and apostles and prophets, they're, they're there unto the work of ministry. That means it, it doesn't make sense. That means they're there for the work of ministry. That mean, it means all you already have your ministries. And so you could, with a view, so that you can perfect the saints. It's backwards. Does it make sense? How can you perfect, equip the saints when you already now have been equipped and you have a ministry already? So it's backwards. I'm using it inverted because this is what it really means. And I'm going to read it one more time and then move on. It says this. The apostles, prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping, perfecting you, each member, so that you for the work of the ministry so that you can have a ministry and serve for the work of ministry so that you can build up the body of Christ. So you're building up the body of Christ. Amen? And I'm going to make it more practical. So let's move on. So I'm going to talk about the categories of gifts. All right, so we talked about already, there are the varieties of gifts, which is the, the apostles, prophets, evangelists, sh uh, shepherds, and pastors. And I'm sorry I'm, I don't call it the fivefold ministry because it, it, it's not really fivefold. It's really fourfold. If you read it accurately in the Greek, okay? Sorry, um, but that said, this, um, after the Christ, there's a comma because there's more information in that verse. Are those uh, con continuation of the verse also in uh, in relation or in, in accordance with uh, that particular 12th verse? Yeah, it goes into 13 because these are prepositions, okay? These are the Greek. That's why I put that in there. But I'm not going to go into that because it gets too technical, okay? But here's what I want to say is that categories are gifts. You have gifts that are given to the body, and those gifts are the apostles and prophets, etc. To the body, right? for equipping. But then you have gifts of ministries, then you have gifts of effects, and then you have gifts of manifestations. Are you following where I'm coming from? There are a variety of gifts. So let's go through that. Can we go through that then? Okay, so let's go. So we see the Lord appointed these ones, right? He gave in verse 11, or placed, or appointed. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 12. Because I want to tie both of them together. This is not easy, man. This is not easy. Okay, 1 Corinthians. Lord, just give me the grace. All right, Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So 1 Corinthians 12 says this. And in verse, 1 Corinthians 12, amen. <clears throat> and, <clears throat> man, how come I have a hard time seeing? Lord, I need to see. Okay, you know what I mean? Um, I did, they have me yesterday too. Okay, First Corinthians twelve. Let's go to verse. Let's go to verse seven. All right. Okay, there it is. Okay, verse four. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are varieties of ministries, and the same Lord. There are varieties of effects. Okay, or that operation or result of divine power. Those are the varieties of gifts, varieties of ministries, varieties of effects. Now, verse 7 says this. 
But to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. So what is that? What is the manifestation of the Spirit? Okay, so it's different than the, those gift things of the body that was given to the body, right? Okay, it says this. For example, verse 8, For the one is given the word of wisdom. Okay, it's the same Spirit. To one, a word of knowledge, the same Spirit. Verse 9, faith. Same Spirit, gifts of healing, other effects of miracles. And here it is. And to others, prophecy. That's a gift, right? That's why we have prophets, right? And to another, distinguish of spirits of various kinds of tongues and to interpretation. But the Lord distributes according to His will. Amen? Okay, and then in verse 18, it says this. But now God has placed the members, each one of them, in the body just as he desires. Okay, so here is where I want to get into <clears throat> verse. Let's go to verse. Let's go to let's go to Romans chapter 12. So do you see there's separate gifts, there's the categories of gifts. Does that make sense? Okay, let's and this is a hard you gotta work through it. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, and teachers are for the local body. Apostles are sent out. Okay? And they have gifts, all right? Teachers, that's a gift of teaching, right? So let's go to Romans chapter 6. In Romans chapter 6, it says this. Or 12. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Okay, Romans chapter 12, it says this. I could see that after break this down even more, but that's okay. 12, 6 says this. Since we have gifts that differ according to grace given to us, each of us is to exercise them accordingly. If prophecy according to the portion of his faith, if service in his service, or he who teaches in his teaching, or he who exhorts in his exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Do you see, you don't find evangelists or apostles there, but you find teaching, those who lead, and those who prophesy. I have a question. One of the gifts that was listed in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 was the gift of faith. But there's a scripture that says he's given to each man a measure of faith. So how, what does that mean? Well, I'm not going to go there right now because okay. it's going to throw you out. Okay. Well, not everyone has different measures of faith, right? Not all have the same measure of faith, yeah. right? So it's a measure. All the gifts are measures, too. Yeah, a measure. That's what's called portion. So you, if someone has faith or teaching, they have a measure of portion in that gift. Not all have the same measure. Okay. And I'm going to go into it on a practical level. But here, verse 6 says, Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to each, to us, each of us is to exercise them accordingly. Okay. Two things. See, the gift, where the source of the gift here is what? Grace produces the gift. Amen. Do you hear what I just said? It says, since we have gifts that differ according to grace given to us, each of us is to exercise them accordingly. Gifts is given by grace. Grace here produces the gift. Amen? So where's the source of the gift? God's grace. I mean, it might shake up the way you guys are thinking now. You can't develop, you can work on the gift he's already giving you and you exercise it. But it's the spirit. Alright? See here, grace produces the gift. Okay, so you have a gift, but it needs to be supplied now. Right? Okay, let's go to Ephesians 4. Okay, so Ephesians 4, so we see in Romans 12, grace produces the gift. Is that right? Okay. Because he says he distributes according to what? His will. <laughs> I know you want to give certain things. I want that. No, well, he distributes according to his will. You can't strong arm the Lord. Okay? Or arm wrestle, that's for sure. Okay, Ephesians 4, verse 7 and 8 says this. It says, but to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. So what does that mean now? 
It means that grace supplies the gift. So grace produces the gift, and then grace supplies the gift. If you really have that gift, then God's grace will supply it, and then it will, it will what? Be expressed and manifested. And it will be accurate every time. Because grace, God's grace, what? Produces a gift. God's grace supplies the gift. Making sense? It's all the Lord. It's not some school of supernatural. No, I, I could say that. Why? Because we experience divine power all the time. We've experienced just all kinds of things. So this is not something, we're, we're not talking theory. This is reality. Amen? Amen. I mean, it, we have people watching videos that are getting healed and delivered just watching the video. I got emails on that. Okay? I mean, get, literally, I mean, all the, this is the Lord. People come here, they get healed by listening to the Word. It's the Word. We've had testimonies of people getting healed right in this room or the room down there. It's the Word of God. It's not, it's not a big entertainment. Hallelujah. Yes, Praise God. So grace produces the gift and grace supplies the gift. Okay? So let's go to 1 Corinthians 12. I want to make this real practical. Amen? 1 Corinthians 12. Okay, and you're going to, when you see this, it's like, okay, got it, okay? It says this, <clears throat> in 1 Corinthians 12, it says, verse 14, all right, it says, <clears throat> for the body is not one member, but many. If the foot says, because I am not a hand, I am not Part of the body. Is it not for the this reason any of any the less a part of the body? And if the ear says, because I am not an eye, I am not a part of the body. It is not for this reason any the less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body, if the whole were hearing, if if the whole were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But now God has placed the members, each one of them, in the body, just as he desired. If they were all one member, where would the body be? So here it says this. If there is a hand, or if there is a mouth, and a hundred or a thousand, whatever, are ears, where's the body? Where's the body? I want you to really think of this. If the, if the whole body, the full body, as anatomically speaking, if there is only one mouth and a thousand ears, if I drew a body, one mouth and a thousand ears, where's the body? Where's the body? Is there a body? The body, the word of God, where's the it says that? Where is the body? I'm not, this is the body, the word of God said, where is the body? Do you have a body? No. So it makes you think a little bit, doesn't it? Okay, let me just go on a little bit more here. <clears throat> then it says here, but if verse 20. But now there are many members but one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Or again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, it is much truer that the members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary goes on. So here, here's my question is, well, I asked this yesterday, does the member, in a, anatomically speaking, your eye, ear, nose, hand, etc., does it serve outside of the body or, or within the body? Is your eye outside of the body? No. 
So how does it, how can any part of the body serve outside of the body? It can't. It can't be independent. It has to be knitted and fitted together because every joint supplies. This is really, really, this is called the body life. Right? It's not just a Sunday gown, it's the body life. God's body is a living organism. It's not an organization. We really, and it takes revelation to see this. I'm just sharing, because otherwise, otherwise, all of us will meet like this. You, you follow what I'm saying? And so here's, remember, does a member of, are these members of our body serving outside of the body or within the body? It has to be within the body. That's body life. Also, gifted members are to the church, like those gifts I spoke about, apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, teachers, and the giftings within each individual member. Okay, gifted members are to the church what hands, ears, eyes, etc. are to the body. So anatomically, think about it. Gifted members to the church is what hands, eyes, ears are to the body. That means each member of the body has to function. That's why that verse, these giftings to the church is to equip you, perfect you, to serve for ministry so that you build up the body of Christ. Because if you are the arm and you're not lifting something, your arm is going to atrophy. That's why it has to function. And every part, every body, because it says in the Word, it says in, 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 in chapter 12, it says, when one body member, right? That verse says, and if one member suffers, all the members suffer. Well, what does that really mean? Well, we have a sister that actually injured her, her both ankles and fractured one, broke it. And she's in a wheelchair. And do you think that affects the rest of her body? Yeah. I mean, and the other body. can she can she function? She can't function as a normal body, right? So do you think her ankles are important? Yeah. Yeah. So if members in your body are not healthy or healed, delivered, freed, and not only that, they can be healed, delivered, freed, saved. But if they don't function, it's still, the body's not going to function properly. That's why the Lord uses our body, an anatomical example, as the body of Christ. Have you ever thought about that? So, so when your member in the body is not healthy, guess what? Everyone else suffers. Is that true? So what do we do with that one that is not healthy? Just kind of, oh, just pass them on to the... Pastor, but he says, you're the one building up the body of Christ. You are causing the growth. The growth, remember when I, were, I said in the beginning, the growth means what? The growth of life, maturity. You need that body part to mature and grow. Not just the, do you grow just sitting for an hour and just hearing something every Sunday, or do you need to practice it? Your body, your, you have, every member has to practice have to work out, has to walk, run, whatever. I don't care what it is. It's got to move or you're just going to atrophy. Amen? Amen? All right, so let me just start closing out here. You see that, <clears throat> let's go to, well, back to Ephesians 4. Hallelujah. Okay, Ephesians 4. See, I'm, I'm trying to make it practical why when we speak about body life, I mean, you can just hang out and just not go and just be, I don't care where you meet, if you're not plugged in, if that's what God has you, you have to be exercised. Okay, and if you're, you're not in a place where the environment doesn't allow you to exercise your gifts, you need to either start sharing these, the passages in the Word of God. <laughs> you know what I mean? You following? Okay, it says here, but there's a reason why these passages are not shared. There, there's a total reason why. You know why, right? Not intentionally, not, it's not, they don't mean any ill. If you want true growth of maturity, every body, every member in the body has to be raised up, maybe taking your place. 
Because maybe you have a gift of teaching bigger portion than I have. But that would be a threat, wouldn't it be? Would, it, would that be a threat? I don't mean, not for me. I'm like, hey, hallelujah. I said, praise God. I would want you to surpass me. I would tell my kids, you know, when they're growing up, I said, you're going to surpass me in everything you do. Why? Because you have a father who's going to teach you all these things that my dad never taught you. You're right, just said. Every challenge, I'm going to teach you this, teach you that. And, I'm going to, and I fed into their minds. Amen? Amen. And they're excelling. In the, you know, my, my kids are excelling in what they do. They're like, they're successful. Both of them, you know? And so I'm just sharing that, that it's really, really important. I'm just telling you. So let's go back to this first, and then we'll close. It says this. It's all the grace of God. It is the mercy of God. Listen, my kids, is, is the mercy of God. Not me. It's all God's grace. You know what I mean? I want to make everyone know that. You know what I mean? And it says here. It says, okay, I'm going to finish up. Verse 11, and he gave some as apostles and prophets and evangelists and some as pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of service. That is, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for the work of service, so that they know that they can function in the body, so that to build the body up. Amen? To the building up of the body of Christ. You're building up the body of Christ. Okay? These other giftings is indirectly doing that. Amen? And then it says this, as a result, well, until we attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a mature man, and to a measure of the stature it belongs to the fullness of Christ. As a result, we are no longer to be tossed, to be children tossed here and there by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, by craftiness and deceitfulness of scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in all aspects into him who is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body being fitted and held together by what every joint supplies according to the proper working for each individual part, causing the growth of the body for the building up of the self and love. Now, last verse says this. Last two verses, it says, um, But speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in all aspects into him who is the head. So Christ, think of Christ as the head. We're the body learning to grow up into him. His thoughts, his minds, his emotions. Right, his, his feelings. We are to grow up and mature into him, to his head. Think about it that way. Okay. You know, maturing into his head, growing up into his head, as an anatomically, right? And then it says this, and then, then the word from, or it's out from, then once you grow up into the head, out, then out from that, okay, whom the whole body now has been fitted. Inter we've fitted. Okay, and held together. See, you know why it's held together? Because you're allowing Christ to fit you in the body. Someone rubs you wrong? Someone a little bit, they're kind of like coarse sandpaper or smooth sandpaper because he's fitting each living stone together. You don't like that? Well, get out of yourself. If you want to grow, you're going to have to learn to be fitted. Got to learn how to get fitted together. If you want to grow and have a body that is what? Speaking for Christ, exemplifying Christ. Then it says this, by every joint supplies. So every member I just taught, everyone has a gift. So what joint supplies? What's that? Every, every single joint. Because every joint has been equipped for service, for ministry, to supply. Your portion is so important. So important. Okay? To supply, that supply, the power, the energy, it's really Christ. According to the proper working of in each individual part, every part has a function. Amen? Which is causes the growth of the body, for the building of up the body of Christ in love. The growth of the body, again, I started that growth means this. It is not numbers, it is the growth in life, his life. It is the growth in maturity. So what's missing in all this? is we need an environment 
that we can function practically in this way. We have environments, and you know, where we gather, we have multiple places that people meet in multiple homes throughout the week, in multiple homes, people fellowshipping, just like the first century, gathering together, functioning, allowing Christ to gain where Christ is truly the head. I personally believe, and this is, I know this is happening, is the Lord is raising up ecclesias like that, and he's going to do it all over the world. And he wants to use every one of you. Why? Because that's why he's equipping you for not just some small little thing. Don't put God in a box and don't limit God. I mean, he's going to affect, you know, God could take everyone here and affect the whole world. Do you believe that? If you allow Christ to gain in you and to impact and to be part of his kingdom building. Amen? So praise God, let me pray. Lord, we thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Lord, Lord, you've given these blessed ones, apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, teachers, as gifts to the local assembly to equip us, Lord, so that we would be raised up in our ministries and to serve so that every member in the body of Christ would be built up, would grow into maturity. Lord, Lord, you desire every joint supplies. Lord, for, for maturity, for growth of life, your life, Lord. Lord, we pray, Lord, Lord, you build your church. And the gates of Hades will not prevail. Lord, we ask you, Lord, because you've given the keys of hell and death, Lord. Hallelujah. You overcame Satan. Lord, the day and age we live in, raise up all these ones, Lord. Raise up in their ministry, Lord, that free them from, from anything that would hinder their thinking or limit you, Lord. The Lord, empower them because there's resurrection life, resurrection life within them. Lord, we just pray that you would raise up many, many ones that are just walking in this power and this, in their giftings, Lord, that you would have a testimony to your name's sake, Lord, and you would shame the enemy, Lord. But we thank you that it's by your grace that gifts are produced. It's by your grace that the gifts are supplied, Lord. So, Lord, you give abundant grace. Lord, may your grace just flow upon everyone here. May your grace move within each and every one here. And we thank you. We praise you now, Lord. And we thank you for your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. So I just